Hi, Heidi McDonald from The Beat uh, here at WonderCon. So my return to WonderCon. I haven't been here in several years. I haven't been to Anaheim in many years. And as you can see, I am in Anaheim. I'm standing in front of Disneyland, the happiest place on earth. So I used to work at Disney and I used to see a lot of what went on behind the scenes at Disneyland. I've had a lot of people to talk to about what really happens. And I've had to tell people that the magic is not real, but some of it is pretty good. Disney's pretty good at it. I'm standing in front of Big Thunder Mountain. I remember, uh, it's been so long. I gotta get back to Disneyland, you guys. Just being so near it is like a yearning to be at Pirates of the Caribbean. It's where I want my ashes to be spread. You know, people actually do. They do that. They try to get their ashes spread. And so, a person I know was on the boat, and the person was standing up to, like, dump the ashes into the Pirates of the Caribbean. And then a big voice came on the loudspeaker saying, sit down in the boat. So, you know, I don't really want my ashes spread at Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay, what's going on at WonderCon? So the last time I went to WonderCon, it was in Los Angeles. It's a rather unusual year from everything that I've heard and maybe not as friendly to a Comic-Con as you might hope. Then I went to it when I was in Anaheim for the first time. It was a little shakedown cruise. There wasn't enough food, there wasn't enough coffee. It's a little tiring. So this time we have the NCAA Sweet 16. I hate college basketball, but everybody's talking about how they got the oh, Sweet 16 boy, here. What? Okay, so we're back, we're inside. Um, there was a very loud person outside. I don't want to give her too much attention, but she was too loud. So we had to come inside, so she's claimed one victim. Um, but I think WonderCon is wonderful. I'm just gonna say that. I think we're wonderful here. So anyway, where was I? Okay, uh, Shazam, Dark Phoenix, um, DC Superhero Girls we have coming in here tomorrow. We're gonna to have an interview with Lauren Faust. Uh, we just had the cast of Dark Phoenix through here, so you're gonna see that. What's really funny about WonderCon for me is it's the third show in three weeks, uh, and then there's Mocha next week. So uh, there's a bunch of people I ran into at the coffee kiosk this morning who have been to all three shows, and they really need that coffee. Uh, I mean, this is really grueling. If you had been to Emerald City, C2E2, WonderCon. I will say the weather here is very nice for a New Yorker. Ironically, Los Angeles people think it's cold now, so they're wearing their shoes. You know, I'm wearing my open-toed shoes because for a New Yorker, this is amazing. This show is very underrated. It hasn't really begun yet, but I can already tell it's underrated. I think a lot of people come here because they can't get to San Diego. Let's face it, it's really hard to get a badge. It's really hard to get a hotel room. It's really hard, period. Pretty much WonderCon is not as hard to get to. It doesn't sell out, let's be honest. It does have a very good crowd. It's really nice here in Anaheim. There's a lot of palm trees, and there's a nice lineup of cartoonists here. There's some really great comics guests. Um, you know, we have Scott Snyder and Tom King, Greg Capullo from DC are here. Um, obviously, there is, you know, some movie stuff going on too, but it's not overwhelming. I think a lot of the people who come to, uh, who used to come to San Diego from the comics and animation community, I think they come here to WonderCon, and I think they have a really good time. So I'm hoping it's on my schedule for the next couple of years uh, just to, you know, enjoy the, um, enjoy the atmosphere. Uh, and it's a lot less stressful is what I'm getting at. And we don't need more stress in our life. Um, one thing that's happening here that I'm very excited about is uh, they're having a panel for this movie, Tolkien. So yes, it's a J.R.R. Tolkien biopic. Now, uh, faithful beat readers or faithful Heidi fans must know that I am a huge, huge Lord of the Rings fan. Some might say I'm a scholar. If reading every book ever written by Tolkien and also the all 12, 12 volumes of the history of Middle Earth uh, qualifies one as a scholar, then I am a scholar. So they're making a biopic of Tolkien. Uh, I think that's kind of a nice idea. He had a very quiet life, but early on he had a lot of adventures, or tragic adventures. He served in World War I, in the worst part of World War I, and uh, what he went through in the trenches totally informed his view of battle and warfare and loss in The Lord of the Rings. I think actually his experiences in World War I are part of what makes Lord of the Rings such a resonant and much loved story. It's, it's not like Game of Thrones where it's front and center how horrible the world can be. It's more like in the background where he put that in. Um, but also his romance with his wife Edith was uh, in real life, it was actually quite charming where they met, they fell in love, and then uh, her guardian would not let them marry because he was not of the, you know, the right age, the right faith. I mean, there was a lot of reasons why they wouldn't let them marry, but he persevered 
and they were the love of each other's lives, and in fact, they inspired not only Aragorn and Arwen in Lord of the Rings, but also Baron and Luthien, the legendary romance from the Silmarillion. And in fact, when they were buried on their tombs, his tomb said Baron, and her tomb said Luthien. So it was really sweet and touching. So anyway, there's a movie starring Nicholas Holt, uh, who you might have seen on The Favorite. He was pretty cool in that, so he likes his period dramas. Anyway, I'm gonna go to that panel. I'll report on it tomorrow when I'm back. We're just getting started here at WonderCon. You know, I love saying that. They say that on SNY all the time, and the Mets were awesome yesterday, by the way. So anyway, we're just getting started here at WonderCon, so I hope you'll join us for the rest of our coverage.